Mama, that's Peter Ghost in a black phantom. Talking us versus y'all. It ain't a fair advantage. It's going just like I thought. Happen like I planned it. Whole click going up. I know they can't stand this. This day. Red Panda Anthem. This day. Red Panda Anthem. This day. Red Panda Anthem. Whole click going up. I know they can't stand it. First truth. Where you are right now in your personal life, you have accepted and approved. We're almost in 2022. And I need everyone to realize that if you're over 30 years old, wherever you are financially, especially if you've been watching the show longer than a year, you are exactly where you want to be. And if you want to level up and you need my help, please put help me in chat. But what I want everyone to do is be extremely accountable for every action that you take. And I know some of you are always like, hey, man, I don't have your investing acumen. You don't need it because I give it to you all for free. I don't know when to get in. I'm telling you every episode when to get in. All you have to do is then execute. If I've made you money, please put yes in chat if you're new so you can have proof that this works. But people will take, let's say even if you make a minimum wage, because of the stress the job causes, you would take all of your money and then turn around and give it to a store, retail outlet, drinks to overcome the sadness that you feel by being in that depressive environment every week. So as we are rounding out and going into the new year, I want to because the new year does not start next year. Per se, the planning has to start this week and the execution has to begin next Monday to prepare for 2022. And some of you frequently ask me, hey, man, what did you do to level up? What, what did you do to get good at the market? What did you do to get good at business? And my buddy Art used to tell me, if you're a good business person, you then will be a great investor. Stay in the house for half of a decade and master your craft. I see so many and I'm not judging. I, this is for those who really want to be at an elite level in their career, livelihood and truly want to have freedom. I'm not saying that it is the healthiest thing that you should do. But when I say I see a lot of you going on vacation, spending, clubbing like crazy, buying bottles, you're trying to portray a lifestyle that you don't have and because someone told you you should buy these trinkets to make people do business with you it's not true people will want to do business with you if you are the best at what you do name me the 20 watches that you've seen jeff bezos elon musk bob johnson back in the day or robert Kraft wear. you can't name them you were not listening and following them because of the jewelry that they had it was because of the level of acumen that they had actually in their business Microsoft my baby I've been telling you buy Microsoft buy, buy Microsoft so they are planning a 60 billion dollar share buyback program and they raise their dividend so when I'm saying two tech two index the two technology companies I always recommend Apple and Microsoft as a creator of the two tech two index strategy I created it no one this is my formula not a community formula my formula it's the safest way to go because not only does it have almost unlimited upside potential it has a dividend and small drawdown for those of you who don't know drawdown is when the market drops how much will it go down in terms of percentage this is a very good sign and once apple and microsoft announces their crypto initiative uh microsoft is going to saturn it's going to skip the whole moon and go right to saturn and i've told you all last year i said december because for many reasons that Kathy was going to be attacked and all of a sudden um, January all these cryptos and I'll, I'll touch on Shibu or later but all of these crypto and coins have taken off as an hedge for most firms to edge her out so an ARKK and, and there's a reason why I've always told you guys Vanguard go Google the impact that Vanguard has had on our market. So in ARKK, $1.97 billion have left her fund. 
Later tonight, at the end of the show, when we start going through prices, for those of you who are in it, I'll tell you if it's good. But there's a reason why I never switch from Vanguard to ARC as a primary investment vehicle. Write this down. The number one decision that you have to make when investing in anything is how big will the losses or drawdown be? And I told you guys last year this will happen. For those of you who didn't listen, I'm sorry. The labor force participation rate um, is, is lowest since 1977. And I'll say this. For all of my employers, we're entering a different era. Because of COVID, people have had a realization and a realization that most of us entrepreneurs have had. The time with our friends, family, loved ones means more than anything. How about you make an ecosystem so attractive that people don't want to leave? So how about... When you promise them, these are the KPIs that you need to hit in order to get a promotion, you actually promote them when they hit those fucking KPIs. How about a three-day work week? How about less meetings? How about integration of virtual assistants and, and AI technology to help your workforce do better? I know it's an investment, but when people are choosing not to work and they would rather stay at home because they don't want to get mistreated there's an adjustment that needs to be made the companies that are not only the sharpest in terms of technology that have the greatest unique selling proposition to the world the one that has close to a monopoly on its technology or innovation side and the companies that are the kindest in this era are going to win the era of treating your employees like shit while telling them that they're family to get them to work more hours for free and then as soon as they want to take a couple days off for the mental health reasons or because they're exhausted or because they have something to happen in their family you won't let them that era is over uh, the Fed chair has officially said, hey, Bitcoin isn't going to go anywhere. I've seen some people ask me, hey, wh what do you think about Bitcoin going to zero? Now, I did say the Bitcoin was going to go to 28,000. We'll talk about that later. Um, I did say in 13 months, the Bitcoin will go to 20,000. Bitcoin will not go to zero. The only way it will is if 99% of institutions pull out at almost at the same time, while most retail investors are exiting as well there won't be a run of the a bank proverbially for bitcoin so there's nothing to worry about so here's the media net worth please type in chat we talked about it on a previous episode how much money do you need to actually retire and this is the media net worth by age i thought this was really fascinating so for those of you that are say in your 50s a benchmark that you want to be at with everything included house 401k any assets, any other securities is 171,000. This is the median net worth. Um, and of course, a couple of weeks ago, when I talked about the levels of net worth, people were triggered. But if you're 18 to 24, you want to have 8,200 bucks, 25 to 29, you want to have 7,500 roughly, 30 to 34, you want to have 35,000. If you're 35 to 39, you want to have roughly 55,000. And net worth if not you are behind so if you this is why i stress continue to invest every single month because this is just the middle of the road and we can honestly state that the middle class is continuing to erode every week and, the, and as long as the value of the dollar continues to drop you're going to need to invest more it's the only thing that's going to save you into your retirement we talked about it before but if you guys want an edge in the market wellwisdom.com is the place to go this is not an ad it's just a site that i love to use if i need some information on a company or to look at what institutions are doing Disclaimer, please do not copy, remix, or re reproduce any of my material without written permission or legal action will be taken. I love you dearly. Please don't. Subscribe to YouTube. Um, I'll be posting a lot more exclusive content, especially in 2022. And join redpanda.com for all updates about Red Panda and some exclusive information on how to make you better into the market. Um, join the Red Panda Crypto Club. So if you want the five safest cryptocurrencies where to invest in, the three best prices of where to get in given by myself and the dream team shout out to the dream team love y'all um additional entries from the algorithm athena uh private telegram ch channel for gym of the week for me and the dream team uh three bonuses are given every month and some incredible fucking gains 
Join the crypto club. Now, if you want to join the stock club, stock club members, please put fire in chat. I love y'all. If you guys want the four best stocks for your retirement, the best places to get into the market called out by me. Additional entries from the algorithm Athena, the best growth stocks to invest in, the two best places where to get into the market, and 28 bonus picks on a year, and the holy trinity of investing uh, presentation that I did at InvestFest with the strategy of how to execute it, then join the stock club. I appreciate you guys so much. Join the Red Panda Crypto Pool. So if you're not in it, I'll send an email out to you tonight about how to join. And I'll say this. I love you guys dearly. If you join my futures program last year, you are not able to make any programs, uh, accountability groups, trading rooms or trading groups around it. I love you dearly. My lawyer is watching closely and he's told me to tell you guys, be mindful. So if you've ever joined a program of mine and you want to remix it, please don't because I don't want to go down this path. But I'm just letting you know that you have been warned. Let's get Market Monday to number one on the charts. And I will give away a thousand scholarships. So go like um, the podcast, of course, rate it five stars, share with five friends and have them tune in every single week. I love you guys so much. And college athletes, Red Panda wants to sp sponsor you for this year and next. And shout out to some people I love. Um, Jim Jones with Capo Coin. You guys support that brother. Uh, shout out to my guy, Marquel, Josh and Bonowin. So Bitcoin will not go to zero. zero. I want to reiterate that again. It was an article published recently that said, hey, if we go into a recession, these are some of the companies that you should invest in. Once again, I want to stress, even during a recession, the two tech, two index strategy works best. Quiz time. If you have VOO, which is one, and VTI, which is another, how many stocks combined do you have in your portfolio by having those two indexes alone? But let's review these 20 really quick. So the first one is ADS, um, Alliance Data System. No, the high was 312. Is the direction of the stock up or down over the last 10 years is down. We don't want to touch that. It is no good. Let's look at AIG. AIG had an incredible bounce since 2020. But if you ever remember what happened in 2007, 2008 and the impact, uh, it's not bad, but if I'm comparing it versus Apple, Microsoft, AMD, Tesla, Google, NVIDIA, Shopify, ISRG, Pool, is it better? Let's go look at Pool, P-O-O-L. For those of you that are in that industry, you know how big of a monster it is. And look at this growth. We want our stocks to continuously go up or go in the direction of the area we want our bank account to go. I want to see hockey stick growth in the stocks that I'm looking at. Um, so AIG is not one that I would put in. ANTM. I actually like this one. APO, Apollo Management. Yes, very good. Let's look at Burlington, B-U-R-L. No, I would not touch. If I'm going to do a retail company, I'm going to look at Target instead. Um, Burlington is strong, but it's not better than Target, Walmart, Home Depot, or Lowe's. Let's look at CNC. Uh, no. In chat, really quick, tell me what this company does before you guys argue. Well, I think it's good. Tell me. What, let's look and see in terms of mind share if people know what this company does. Uh, CLTV is a definite no. CTSH. Cognizant is okay, but there are a couple, a couple companies that are better. No. Comscope, hell no. I love you guys uh, as a company, but the stock I don't love. Fitbit. I need to bring crime. Oh, this is fifth third. I'm. I'm Mark that. That's one of my mistakes I've made on Market Monday. Uh, fifth third, good. I like JP Morgan a little bit better. And if I'm going to go FinTech, uh, for sure, I'm going to look at Square in comparison. Um, I like fifth third a hell of a lot better. Let's look at GM. I'll talk about this later. But yes, LIN. Yeah, I, I actually like this one. Talked about this one already. Lowe's, for those of you that are in construction and real estate, I do not know how you are not investing in Lowe's and Home Depot. I do not get it. Um, those are two of the safest ones in your industry. Madison Square Garden. No, the Knicks are trash. So is the stock. Sorry. Shout out to everybody on the Knicks. Um, NCR is okay. New York Times. Actually, not bad. But if you need a cheaper stock that is on the rise, yes. Um, I wouldn't make it one of my primary investments personally, but if you need a cheaper stock, yes, Oxy definitely would not touch because you cannot be pro ESG, 
pro Tesla, pro GM, and be pro Oxy. They don't mix. PGRE, Paramount Group, no, let go. Um, RTX, it's okay. Raytheon is okay. I know because of war considerations, you guys may consider it, but whenever you're comparing a stock, you can't just compare it against its class. You have to compare it against every company that could be better or that could surpass it. So Tesla's running up, of course. Great. This should be back to its highs in second quarter of next year. If it's not going to outperform Apple, Microsoft, AMD, Google, you can't put it in your portfolio. So once again, scholarship time, scholarship time, right? So the simplest way to invest in the market is two indexes and two technology companies, top tier. So VOO, VTI, if you want some more growth, VUG or VGT. Write those down. VOO, VTI, VUG, or a VGT. Only two. You can't do three tech, three index. Don't remix. Two and two. Apple and Microsoft. And, and until you can present me a better technology company than those two together, we won't replace them. Leave it as is. I love you. So GM um, revealed that the company will offer 30 all-electric model vehicles by the middle of this decade. So when I told you guys, the entire strategy of when you're looking at a, at a space, a sector, you want to invest in the top three and ideally get into the top two. So if Tesla is the preeminent leader in EV, who would be second? And I've said for a while now, GM has been doing great things. Ford, not so much, um, even though the Bronco looks a little bit impressive. I, I can't lie about that. The management of Ford has not been as great as GM in comparison. So GM is going to have a stranglehold. And if, like we said last year, um, when we we're talking about the election, if Biden pushes this initiative for the fleet of vehicles in the United States to be EV, he's probably going to do the deal with GM and not Tesla. Thoughts on Shibu? Uh, normally, I'll have a salacious take on this and be like, it's, it's trash and it's going to fall in these amount of days. But the thing I will say that will help you the most, um, and you guys have to realize, like, if I'm attacking an asset class, it doesn't mean that I'm attacking you because none of us own the asset. Like, I get so tired of us arguing about whether indexes are better versus this versus that. It's like, you don't own enough of the asset to even argue about it. But the point I want to make is if you want to make the most amount of money and you have a definitive thesis or idea about why you love an asset, the best thing you can do, especially for highly volatile stocks or currencies or coins, is to hold them for a 10 year period. If you do that, you can hit some pretty amazing home runs. And then maybe next week I'll show you guys if you invested a thousand dollars in Bitcoin 10 years ago, what it would be now and break that down versus a couple of different asset classes. But the best advice I can give you is to hold it for 10 years. Since Bitcoin has went to 28,000 and some change, like I called, shout out to Kristen, um, we hit 56K. So when we hit these ridiculously yearly lows and a great homework assignment for you, write this down. Every single month over the last 10 years, there is a percentage drop that occurs in every currency, every asset class. Same with Bitcoin. You probably should write down what they are. And if we have a deep drop based on those percentages, so like, let's say hypothetically, not saying this is true, but let's say Bitcoin tends to go down 22% in August on average over 10 years, you should set your entry at 22% from the high of that moment in August to be able to get into a great place into the market and then get some great gains out of the market. And the number one reason why investing is important, because look at this. In 1932, $20 would get you 482 gallons of gas. Now it will get you seven. And if you're driving like a Yukon Denali or, you know, any any big SUV, you know, $20 isn't going to stretch very far for you. Um, 675 dozen eggs in 1932. Now you only get 10. And then 2,700 first class stamps. Now it'll only get you 40, but most of you are sending your messages via 
text <laughs> and DM. Over the last year, natural gas has shot up 141%. Um, heat and oil is a one up 120%. Gasoline is one up 93%. Coffee is one up 90, uh, excuse me, 79%. And lumber is one up 24%. Remember when lumber was going crazy and people was like stockpiling it? And I told you, hey, this won't last forever. But look at this silver and gold. Silver, negative 8%. Gold, negative 8%. Gold and silver are not the hedges that everyone thinks that they are. Same as the bond market. Unless you're much older. And even then, I can argue that investing in indexes is a better way to go. But silver and gold are not a hedge that you should partake in if that's what you're truly looking for. Top performing assets of this year, Ethereum is up 383%. Bitcoin is up 90 NVIDIA is up 59%. Google, which we probably don't talk about enough, but it's up um, 57%. Microsoft is up 32% and twitter is up 13 percent. tesla only 11 but like i said next year i think tesla is going to take off as of february 2020 uh cardano is up 2880 percent. and this is why i tell you guys if there is something that you believe in you have to hold it because the more you trade an asset that has a chance to go five or six thousand percent that time out of the market is going to cost you dearly you do not want to miss out on those moments Man, and this is why I love the S&P 500 and why it's a primary anchor and what you should be investing in. Listen, 1%, negative 1% happens every year on average. Negative 5% happens every 1. years on average. Negative 15% happens every 2.5 years. Negative 20% happens every 4 years on average. And negative 30% happens every 9 years. The growth, however, is so tremendous that when the market is dropping, like how it is now, and last month when I told you guys, hey, September is one of the months where the market bleeds down anyway. February, September, and October, write that down, is when the market has a tendency to drop. You should be elated. You shouldn't be fearful. So if you're investing in the overall market and you know these stats, it should take a lot of the fear out of the equation for you. And shout out to my guy, Ty, who's uh, here with me right now. But between... Facebook, IG going down, Twitch's source code being put on a dark web, and Southwest canceling 1,800 flights. Man, there's something tricky going on in the world, and I don't know what it is. It reminds me a lot of when COVID first started to have an effect on the world, and everyone was not announcing what it was yet. Please keep your eyes open. And I know it's because part of it is because uh, people are protesting if they have to get the COVID shot. I get that. But when you have such a coordinated event or attack, there is something deeper at play. Please be aware. Please be wise. Please be patient. And and I think last week I saw this on um on EYL's page and, and people were selling talking about Tina Turner selling her catalog for 50 million. And it was a mistake. And I wanted to put this like for business reference. Like we have to stop throwing around these numbers as if the, this is not a king's ransom in real life. So if you ever make $50 million in your career, which I hope all of you do, if you make $288,000 a year, you have to realize that is your salary for 173 years. And if you make $1.4 million a year, that is your income or your salary for 34 years in advance. But off of that 50, let's say, and I, well, what's Tina Turner, 82, 84? Let's say, hypothetically, she puts all of the money into an index or safe ETF. She can make $5 million a year of interest from that alone. And we have to realize like less than 7,000 black people in history have had $50 million of net worth in their possession. And let's be honest, I don't... When's the last time you played Tina Turner on Spotify or Apple? Like most people are quoting the, the domestic violence cake scene more than a song. So like I know everyone wants a hot take and everybody's trying to make their own podcast in the comments. But man, 50 million is a lot of damn money. And congrats to the queen for selling a catalog for that much. I know some people like TV rights and all the back end. She could have got a hundred. She probably only God willing. Let's say she has 30 more years to live. 
she wants to enjoy her life and if it is invested properly there will be money on the back end for her 50 million is a hell of a lot of money shout out to dorian for sending me this one year ago uh the mobile payment platform pix did not exist now half of brazil population uses it and this is why i tell you guys remember last year when i was like go study the russell uh 2000 go study the german dax go study the nikkei go study the bavespa there are other markets that matter that people are overlooking by not looking internationally and i know some of you gonna be like well you hate china yes i don't think you should invest in chinese stocks but oh, at this time but there are other markets that there are going to be big players in <clears throat> and you have to realize and dorian sent me sent me this last night and he's like man banks are dead i don't think that they're dead yet but for banks that don't have a, com a competitive advantage or for community banks that don't provide exceptional service and convenience you guys are going to be in trouble because not only are you getting squeezed from the big banks that are there fintech is crushing a lot of competition Put yes in chat if you heard about PIX and put PIX if it's the first time you have actually heard about it. And I was going to touch on this last week, but we kind of ran out of time. I want to give you an investing pyramid of a couple of different asset classes. So, of course, index funds, they'll give you around 13% return per year. Then you have technology stocks. So you can get anywhere from 30 to 45% return in a year if you have great entries. And I think on some days i probably have some of the best on the planet with bitcoin on average over the last seven years you can get 69 percent return so this initial three are deemed the safe havens everyone put safe haven in chat then now you have some more riskier assets where you could potentially have higher upside and if you've done the work here and all the homework on market mondays and, and if you want to be rich go watch every episode and take notes because what if this entire time i was teaching you how to be an investor in all asset classes by first starting you in a publicly traded market maybe maybe not but maybe angel investing for less than half of the population um you can squeeze out 250 percent returns or more it's not likely unless you have a competitive advantage or you're able to do something to help move that business and help them scale right now fifth you have venture capital you get 12 percent return on average if you look at all deals in aggregate but let's look at these stats 50 percent of venture funds return less than 1x only five percent return more than 3x and only 1% of venture firms get returns up to 10x. Which is the most popular VC firm of all time? Please put it in chat. With private equity, you can get anywhere from, you're probably going to get anywhere from 10 to 12% uh, ROI over a 20 year period. But if you can hit a home run, you can be in a 500% return to 800% return range. So when you learn how to invest in one thing, you then have a formula to invest in a bunch of other things and i'm not saying that angel investment is easy ventures is easy um but i do want you guys to be well versed in a bunch of areas because there will be a lot of opportunities that come your way um here pretty soon so i wanted to put that out there and i know some of you were triggered about the wealth level so let me tell you with love i'm not here to re-trigger you this evening but look at these stats the united states of america there's 17 million millionaires in this country. And most of them follow the same five or six paths to get there. Do you not deserve to be one of them in the future? Put yes or no in chat. There are 56.1 million millionaires in the world. There's 56 million millionaires in the world. And there's anywhere from a 6.4 to 22.3% chance of becoming a millionaire, depending on what path and industry you are a part of. But this is the one that really caught me off guard. There's 214,000 people in the world that have a net worth above 25 million. So while we're arguing on if these levels are accurate or not, 17 million people in the United States of America have a net worth of at least $1 million, 56 million millionaires in the world, and 214,000 people have a net worth above $25 million. My job is to make you think higher, think bigger, reach 
for more. Know that you're worthy. Know that you're loved. Know that your family deserves this. Your friends deserve this, even if you think currently that you don't. The investing blueprint that I need you to follow. Number one, I've covered it before, but we got to study the macroeconomic environment first. Basically, are things in the world good or bad? Bad presents opportunity. Please put that in chat. A bad economic economic a bad economic environment, if I can talk, presents immense opportunity. Number two, then the fundamentals of the company. Then you have to study what the biggest macroeconomic buyers are buying. Vanguard, BlackRock. Understand what they are buying. And in 20 years, it may be another player. Study them. Because they are the market makers. And number four, you then have to understand the price of, of where to get in. If you master these four things, you will be able to invest very easily into the market and have a lot of safety in doing so. Quiz time. How long do immortal jellyfish live? So when you go back and watch previous Market Mondays, there's a common theme that you see in these. There's a lot of pictures of nature. A lot of pictures of aquatic life and a lot of pictures of space. There is a reason why someone put the clues together in the first one that does. I'll be sure to give you an amazing prize. But maybe the secret to living for a long period of time, as Jeff Bezos is trying to do, maybe that secret is in species that do not die. I'll touch more on that in four or five weeks. You need 10,000 shares for freedom. And then you need 100,000 shares for everlasting wealth. So if you find a company that has good prospects, or let's say you get into a coin really cheap and you have the chutzpah to be able to hold it for a 20-year period, 15-year period, the more coins or the more shares you can have, the better. Um, and I'm not here to, to bust anyone's balls or make anyone feel uncomfortable, but the like the, the levels that you need to get to first is get your first share under your belt then you need to get to 100 then you need to get to a thousand then you get to ten thousand so many people are trying to play on your emotions and say you don't need that much because they want to keep you in your ecosystem to keep you buying i said it last week my job is in three years for you to tune me out and say bro i don't even need you anymore i have twenty six thousand shares of apple what the hell i need to listen to you for I've done my job then. Most people are just trying to keep you contained so you can keep buying. Please put 100,000 shares in chat if you want everlasting wealth. And I was doing some research this weekend. So I said, okay, I know over 20 years, over no period, is the S&P 500 going to be down. If you love your kids dearly, if you love your grandkids, listen. The 40-year average of investing in S&P 500 is 262% return on investment. Go look at any 40 year period, you'll be up. And this is conservative. This does not include NASDAQ, right? This does not include tech alone. This is just investing in the S&P 500, a born category, but a born category that presents and produces results. S&P is like Kawhi, like it's not that flashy, but it's gonna get the job done. And you don't really have to worry day in, day out if the S&P 500 is gonna perform. And I want to be on the record for this. <laughs> I was doing some studying, and I'm, I'm sure Button would be happy about this because maybe Spotify go out of business, right? Um, just joking. Spotify, shout out to y'all. Please call us. <laughs> CNN, call us. But streaming for music will hit its peak popularity in between 2027 and 2029 and will start a very slow decline. I know it sounds controversial, but if you study the history of music and the media that is used there is a life cycle and this is why it's important to study fibonacci cycles benner cycles and then this crystal ball is glowing um every media has a cycle a life cycle that when it goes through a an advance acceleration it hits a peak point and then slowly begins to decline so when you're studying the market you then can see the data in a clean way um, and I know people are thinking like, hey, I don't think that's possible. But for a couple of reasons, if you look at what the history of what happened with LimeWire, Kazaa, Napster, and how that affected. And then, of course, since that took over the music industry, they then had to play ball, which 
I mean, I love Steve dearly. Like last week was the ten year passing of um, ten year anniversary of his death. But sing, Steve Jobs sing, single handedly destroyed the music industry. And there's going to be another wave where streaming is going to get so saturated, which it is now, around 27 to 29, you're going to see that the music industry is going to go through an upheaval and quiet takeover once again. So keep your eyes out there for all my musicians that are out there. These are the safest stocks to invest in. Google. I know I don't touch on it enough, but I've said it on the show probably 15 times. Google's performance um, historically and the last year has been incredible. So if we look here since 2020, which I means 1181, look at the growth of Google since then. And then, of course, when you're thinking from the perspective of search engine and advertising, is Bing better? Like you guys aren't using any other. I mean, even for privacy reasons, you can argue maybe DuckDuckGo has a, an advantage there. But at scale. When you ask people what's the predominant search engine, people are always going to say Google. And it goes back to that top of mind share. So when you ask a person about a category, who do they mention? Google is dominant there. Um, but their run, I know the, the stock is pricey, but for the run that they've had, it is one of a kind. NVIDIA, Microsoft, Facebook, if you're already in it, if, if you have not been in it already, I would not add positions, but if you're in it already, you're safe. And then, of course, Amazon and I've been touching on space for like the last five or six weeks. I don't know if you guys saw the article, but now Jeff Bezos is coming out of his, you know, Jay-Z like retirement. And uh, now he's going to put a bunch of his evidence of blue origin. And I was having a couple conversations with friends and the space thing is a lot deeper. And I don't know everything about the space initiatives and traveling to outer space. and Right. But the thing that I do know is from a, perspective i won't touch on that never mind let me go to the next one <laughs> shopify is the ebay of this era and stripe is the new paypal once again i know i know you want me to cover what's really gonna happen in space no i i can't whenever my intuition tells me i shouldn't touch on something i'm gonna leave it alone but there is a reason like i said that he is coming out of retirement to then put a lot of attention on blue origin um be mindful of that shopify is the, is the ebay of this era and Stripe is a new PayPal. So these are two companies that I love dearly. And then where to get into the market? People ask me this all the time, and I want to add a couple of ways to get in. So first, you have the 200-day moving average, which is a classic way to get in. The second way, the 72-day moving average. And uh, shout out Shiggy and Ian. I'm going to keep my promise to you. I'm gonna, After Stock Club, I'm going to send you this uh, link to be able to automatically have it on your charts if you guys want me to drop a link to be able to automatically place it on your chart and think or swim please put yes number three the yearly open so wherever the stock opened at opened up at on the year that could be a third place to get in fourth fibonacci retracements fifth please write this down every company has a worst month of the year for a grade a stock so apple has a month historically where it performs worse so does google so does nvidia amd jp morgan um, lowe's mcdonald's target all have months where they perform if you go look at what those are and if you do a quick google search in 10 15 minutes you'll have it that's the fifth way you can get in and then six which is the simplest buy every single month like if you're not putting in tens of thousands of dollars into the market at one time hundreds of thousands or millions trying to fight over a couple dollars difference won't mean anything in the long run a lot of times when people want entries that's because they're looking to trade it so the act of actually investing in that asset every month is way more important than getting the sharpest entry but not having a bunch of shares into it so i want to give you that perspective risk to reward is more important than indicators so once again i mean i talked about this in the holy trinity but if you let's say you have a you're risking one dollar to make 11 or a hundred dollars to make 1100 you can lose almost 90 percent of the time and still be profitable now will your soul be hurt will your emotions be hurt yes do you want to lose that many investments no do you want to lose that many trades no but you have to put the math in your favor to know so for example if you are investing in, in let's say apple at 
200 bucks and you're risking one to make 11 you then want to put your target at 2200 so take the number in which you enter it multiply that times 11 and that will give you an exit price for where you should be able to get out i want to remind you you cannot overtrade your way to freedom 2022 i'm going to push this really hard and for those of you know holy trinity you know why i said 12 but i'm going to start telling you guys now if you're not winning 90 percent of your trades you should take one trade a week please put one trade a week in chat because most of you are over trading over leveraging and is breaking your spirit so i need to lead better in this regard to tell you maximum you should be now taking one trade per week only unless you're winning 90 percent of your trades and i want to leave you with this this is the most important thing black men it's really small but it's really big to your child and their confidence and I want you to go look up the studies based on how much time you spend with your child, how it affects their confidence, their ability to learn and ability to connect with others. If you have a child or children, please teach them one thing a day. It doesn't have to be this dense ass conversation as if you're talking to like Neil deGrasse Tyson or uh, Milton Friedman back in the day, but teach them one simple thing per day. And this is most important. Number two, hug your child for one minute straight when you do hug them. I notice when I do this with Xander, sometimes he'll say, get off of me. And when I posted this, some of you said, man, there's like a relief that kids feel when you embrace them for that long. And while we're talking about data and analyzing companies and going through these filings and 13K, like we need to put the same kind of metrics in place for the children we have or child that we have to make sure that they grow up and their hearts and emotions are filled with love because the world will not give them that love or affection so for the next month i want you every single day to monitor and track if you hold and hug your kid for one minute and in 30 days i want you to see how they feel that's going to have the biggest impact on your children and I want to start to put together some KPIs around for black men, for black dads and for dads all across the world. I love you guys to help our kids be stronger and grow up in a safer, more loving environment in which we were grown. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Put fire in chat if you enjoyed it. These are the master lessons with the master investor. I'm here to give you the freedom that you want. I love you. Over and out.